Roberto Baggio is an outstanding player in the history of football. His technique, finesse, and elegance have made him a virtual deity in Italy. Despite numerous injuries, the man nicknamed Il Divine Codino always managed to bounce back and play at the highest level. A true football icon of the 80s and 90s, the number 10 had a profound effect on a whole country. A look back at the life of the best player in the history of Italian football. Little Roberto was born on February 18, 1967 in Caldonio, in the Veneto region of northern Italy. He quickly became an admirer of the Brazilian Zico's game and supported Inter Milan. At the age of 15, he made his debut in the Italian third division with Lanarosi Vicenza. Soon, the cruciate ligaments in Roberto's right leg failed, forcing him to undergo major surgery. It was the first of many injuries for Baggio. The Italian would rise again and show the public the full extent of his talent at Fiorentina. The year was 1986. His first goal for the Viola came from a free kick in a match against Napoli under His Majesty Diego Maradona. The first goal of a long series. In just two seasons, Roberto scored more than 50 goals and led his team to the UEFA Cup Final. A final against Juventus that Baggio and his teammates lost 3-1 on aggregate. Two days later, La Gazzetta dello Sport dropped a bombshell. The Viola, in dire need of cash, were forced to sell Roberto Baggio to their Turin rivals for around 13 million euros, a record at the time. This news triggered riots in the Tuscan capital. The Tifosi shouted their anger at their leaders and clashes with the police ensued. Despite his desire to stay, Roberto Baggio was nevertheless transferred to Turin. Before joining the old lady, the Italian was selected for the 1990 World Cup which took place in his homeland. Playing in attack with Salvatore Scilacci, Baggio made his mark on the international scene. But in the semi-final between Italy and Maradona's Argentina, coach Aziglio Vicini put Baggio on the bench. Il Divine Codino came on late in the game and could not change the course of the match. The Azzurri eventually lost the match on penalties. In his first season in Turin, Baggio already established himself as the leader of a team without Michel Platini, who left three years earlier. A clinical striker, a great free-kick taker, technically adept and always well-placed, the Biancaneri No. 10 showcased all his talents. On his return to Florence, the Italian refused to take a penalty. He was replaced during the match and then grabbed a viola scarf. Uve lost the match and some fans were highly critical of Baggio's attitude. Beyond this match, Turin's season was mediocre. The team finished in 7th place, far from the European positions, a first in 28 years. The seasons that followed had nothing to do with this mixed first year. Baggio started his second stint at Juve timidly with 4 goals in 15 games, but the Italian scored 14 goals in the last 15 games. As a result, the Bianconeri finished in 2nd place behind AC Milan. In the 92-93 season, Baggio continued to play to his already high standards and added an impressive passing game to his already well-developed attacking palette. After finishing fourth in the league, Juventus, led by their prodigy, went on to win the UEFA Cup. The playmaker's performances were so impressive that he was awarded the Ballon d'Or and the FIFA Best Player of the Year award. Little Roberto became the best player in the world. Despite a 1993-94 season that was somewhat unsuccessful from a collective point of view, Baggio arrived at the 94 World Cup with a label of global star. After a complicated group phase, Italy faced Nigeria in the last 16. Trailing until the 88th minute, Baggio took matters into his own hands to equalize just before the final whistle. In extra time, he converted a penalty to send the Italians through to the quarterfinals. In the quarterfinals, Roberto and his teammates came up against the Spanish. With only two minutes remaining, Il Divine Codino lit up the Boston Stadium by dribbling past the goalkeeper to secure another victory for his side. In the semifinal, Italy faced Bulgaria with future Ballon d'Or winner Christo Stoichkov. Buoyed by a Gela Baggio who scored another brace, the Italians qualified for the final where they faced the Brazil of Bebeto, Romario, Cafu, Rai, Leonardo, Dunga, and the young Ronaldo. After a close match, the final was settled on penalties, a first in the history of the World Cup. After Baresi and Massaro had failed to score, Baggio had the penalty in his hands to keep Italy's hopes alive. The superb number 10 took a lot of momentum, 
ran up and sent the ball flying into the Pasadena sky. Roberto was alone at the penalty spot, hands on hips, head down. Baggio, who had been exceptional throughout the finals, missed the last kick of his World Cup. He had dreamed of taking a penalty in the World Cup final against Brazil since he was a child. A dream snapped shut. Back in Turin, Roberto Baggio struggled to recover from the American failure. He even injured his knee and missed four months of competition, during which time the young Alessandro Del Piero, with the same profile as Roberto, made up for his absence perfectly. The Caldonio native recovered from his injury and remained a key figure for the Bianconeri. He scored two goals and provided an assist in the doubleheader against Dortmund in the UEFA Cup semifinal. He also scored three times in the crucial match against Parma, Uve's runners-up in the 1995 season. The Turinese won 4-1 and were crowned Italian champions. It was Roberto's last game for Juventus, but above all, the first Scudetto of his career. Pushed out by the emergence of Del Piero, Baggio packed up and left Turin. He signed for AC Milan and a few months later won another Scudetto, the second in a row. However, the man also known as Raffaello, named after the Italian artist because of the beauty of his movements and the emotions he brought to the spectators, did not regain his level at Uve and never fully established himself in Lombardy. Understanding the situation, Baggio decided to leave Milan to avoid missing the 1998 World Cup in France. He landed at Bologna, where he was guaranteed a starting place. He had one of the best seasons of his career, scoring 22 goals in 30 league games, including two against AC Milan, a great revenge for Roberto, who was finally selected for the World Cup. After two failed penalty shootouts, Baggio saw a new generation of players such as Del Piero, Vieri, Inzaghi, Nesta, and Cannavaro arrive in the national team. The Italian number 10 was still very good at the start of the World Cup. He provided two assists, scored two goals, and was the real leader of this new Italy. But the story ended in the quarterfinal against France, once again in yet another penalty shootout. Baggio did not know it yet, but it would be his last tournament with Italy. Despite this failure, Inter decided to bring him in to accompany the phenomenon Ronaldo in attack, but Inter's 98-99 season was a major disappointment. On a personal level, positioned as a true 9.5, Baggio increasingly became a final passer rather than a striker. In the following offseason, he saw a number of players join the team, including international striker Christian Vieri. Faced with this competition, and due to strong tensions with coach Marcelo Lippi, his playing time was greatly reduced. Baggio even found himself without a club in the summer of 2000. Although the break with his beloved club was brutal, Roberto left an indelible mark on the memories of Inter fans and also on his strike partner Ronaldo, who said, he is the best player I have ever played with. He then joined the small team of Brescia. And although the club had failed for 30 years to stay in Serie A for two consecutive seasons, the situation changed with the arrival of Il Divin Codino. During his four years there, Baggio helped the Lombardi club maintain their position without too much difficulty. Even better, he then took them to the Inter Toto Cup final in 2001. The ponytail divinity also saw a certain Pep Guardiola then at the end of his career join him. The two men developed a strong friendship. Guardiola said, as did Ronaldo, that Baggio was the best player he ever played with. In 100 games at Brescia, Baggio scored 46 goals and provided 11 assists. He played his last game at the age of 37 in 2004 against AC Milan. When he left, all the football fans in the world stood up and thanked Baggio warmly. A player who had graced them with so many gestures, so many magnificent inspirations that someone like Maradona said he embodied beauty itself. And that's all there is to it. He is a footballer, but to describe Baggio as just a football player is to call the Mona Lisa a mere painting. Baggio is a creator, an inventor, an interpreter of the world's greatest folk art. This is what American journalist Michael Farber wrote in Sports Illustrated magazine in 1993. Despite several setbacks in his career, Roberto Baggio left his mark on a whole generation of football lovers. Although he played for several rival clubs, the Tifosi never held it against him. Admired by his peers, Baggio would go down in history as one of the best players to ever touch a football. 
Despite having undergone seven different knee operations, Baggio dazzled the eyes of millions of fans around the world and inspired many young players. Perhaps that was his deepest childhood dream, to make others dream like Zico did for him. What do you think of Roberto Baggio's career? Where do you think he belongs in the footballing pantheon? Tell us what you think in the comments. Before you leave, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you soon for a new video. Ciao!